The built environment industry is a very fragmented industry. People are often operating in silos. So, uh, for example, I work a lot with product manufacturers um, and they spend a lot of time either selling direct to suppliers uh, or contractors or specifiers um, and they don't often get the opportunity to communicate with the rest of the industry and the problem with that is when it comes to information about their products there isn't a cycle of information along the journey there's a very fragmented process of information transferring and that affects has a knock-on effect on a whole load of other things for example if we want to implement the circular economy in construction if you want to reuse buildings all of those things rely on having information about the products in those buildings um, and if the communication process isn't there, then you've got a problem. Different parts of the industry have, have different requirements for information on products. When you think about the hundreds of products in any particular building, um, in order to design a, a building or a, an extension to a building, you have certain d design information needs. Um, but then the construction uh, phase also has other information needs. Um, and then the client may have other information uh, requirements for the asset that they hold. And then operating the building also has other information needs. Um, so manufacturers, for example, have to be aware of those different needs and be able to provide different sorts of information for different stages in the process. Yes, with off-site manufacture, you've still got the need to be able to communicate that information and, uh, and be able to access information about what's in your building after it's been constructed, maybe you know, a generation later. So there's a whole challenge about which is being investigated at the moment about how you can identify products years later so that you, you know what's involved in them. And, uh, and manufacturing on site, off site actually um, provides you with the opportunity because there's a clean environment to actually start thinking about how you do that product information exercise, uh, which is, is quite promising as an opportunity. Yes, and when you think about it, there's an awful lot of dimensional information that's collected about buildings uh, when you're retrofitting, and there's a lot of technology being involved in that process. Um, and there's a lot of work being done in uh, sensors and uh, uh, the Internet of Things and so on about collecting information as well. But we also need to think about the information about what products are in the building um, so that when you're uh, retrofitting, you know what's there, and often it can't be seen. Um, so, and, and that can also influence how you get involved in retrofitting buildings. So, for example, I work with uh, single ply industry, single ply roofing membranes. You can adhere membranes or you can mechanically fix them. If you adhere them to insulation, then they're quite difficult to separate apart. That makes the products diff more difficult to recycle and reuse. Um, and that can be a problem with, you know, the whole circular economy thing as well. Um, so you have to know what's in the building, but also how it's been applied so that you know whether you can actually reuse that material as well. Off-site manufacturing isn't actually a new thing in, in the construction industry. It's been around for a long time. Um, back at the beginning of the 21st century, I was involved with housing associations who were looking at off-site manufacture for, for building small uh, units of housing uh, across East Anglia. Um, and uh, some of the problems they faced may, may still be an issue today. So they had, had problems with um, planning requirements being changed quite late on in the process and therefore having to introduce the sort of variety that made the process of off-site manufacture at the time a lot less cost efficient. Um, and they also had problems with delivery because quite often they were looking at delivering quite large units to site. And, and a lot of these sites were in small rural communities where they just couldn't get access for the size of lorries that they wanted to use. Um, so those challenges, the challenges are still there and it'd be interesting to see whether the technology has actually become aware of those and can address them today in a way that it couldn't uh, in, in those times.